The Children's Center has a long and rich history that includes people who by faith obeyed God's call. In fact, it all started for us in 1898 with one person who heard the Lord and obeyed that calling. Renee Mallory was born in Ottawa, Kansas. She grew up in an area that was known for helping immigrants, the homeless, the displaced. Maddie ended up in Oklahoma when she started working at Dawes Academy which was a school for children of freed slaves. Eventually, she was recruited as superintendent of a mission school in Winnipeg, Canada. So it was while en route from Ardmore to Canada that she stopped in Oklahoma City and she noticed a large amount of homeless children just living on the streets, unkept, uncared for, no food. And she really had a heart for those kids. And she decided that God was calling her here. Later that same year, she came back to Oklahoma City to fulfill God's call and founded the School for Orphans. They found a rental home, but Maddie had just five cents to her name. She had to take her watch and offer it in order to get the owner of this rental property to take them in. And so it was all kind of up in the air about whether they were going to be able to stay there. They had a great prayer that night, asking God to help them. We need you, God. The next day, they got everything they needed, $25 rent, food. People came and brought furniture. So that is kind of the essence of her life. Start with hardly anything. God intervenes. And, you know, she was a woman of faith, and she was a woman of ingenuity. From that point on, they moved several times throughout Oklahoma City, but finally landed here in Bethany. She was not gonna give up on God's call, and she was gonna give everything that she had to make it happen. But she recognized that she was not going to be able to lead this onward. It was in 1920 that Maddie decided to turn leadership of the orphanage over to five women. Four of those women had been with her from the very beginning. The National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis was organized in 1938 to serve you in your fight against poliomyelitis, one of America's most vicious crippling diseases. In the 1940s and 50s, the United States was caught up in the polio epidemic. And as a result, the decision was made to turn the orphanage into a medical facility. 1947, Mr. Venable came. And that's where it kind of started turning around into something different. They were in some kind of rundown farmhouse. He saw that there was a huge need here. And that's what really touched his heart. In 1951, they completed a contract to build a new building. They now had a 65 bed modern facility. Their capital investment had increased from 40,000 to 500. Thousand. This was a massive turnaround for the Children's Center. My name is Brenda Nussbaum, and I was born in the town of Blue, Oklahoma. When I was 16 months old, I became very ill with polio. My parents had to rush me to the Cripples Children's Hospital and then I came to the Convalescent Center, that's what it was called at that time, and that was where I came for rehabilitation. When I left the Crippled Children's Hospital, they were not sure that I would be able to even set up. Of course, while I was there, they weren't even sure at first I was gonna live, but I came here and I had a really terrific nurse, and she really encouraged me by putting a bar above my bed, and she would encourage me to work up to the point that I could set up. At first, I said, I can't do it, I can't do it. But one day I was trying it when she wasn't around and I actually accomplished that. And she was walking by the door and I said, hey, Pearson, look. And when she came to the door and looked in, I fell back, but she saw that I could do it. And then she really started working with me and got me to the point that I could sit up. She really made a great difference in my life and my family's life. Clay Venable retired in 1968, and the hospital went from being a hospital to an intermediate care facility for children. And it was during that transition that the center really began to experience a great deal of decline 
both financially and just in their identity. And it was about 10 years of this before Carol and Albert arrived and brought new hope and new life to the facility. I went to Southwestern College of Christian Ministries for two years, and then I finished my degree at Southern Nazarene College right across the street. By going to uh, SNU, I would drive by and always wonder what was here. And actually, Albert called me and he wanted me to go to church with him that night. And in the service, there was a man that sat behind me. He was the superintendent of the Children's Convalescent Center. And so after service, I began to talk to him and say, I've always had an interest. I don't know what it is, but my heart was drawn here. And so he invited me to come for an interview as volunteer coordinator. And I'll tell you, I had never ever experienced anything like I did that day when I walked in. It was quite a remarkable history for all those years, but when I came, it really was at an all-time low. Financially, it was about to close. I had a license in 1978. I was 25 years of age to run a nursing home. The Children's Center was a nursing home at that time. It was a nursing home for kids. And they couldn't get anyone to come in to do the final close down. So they recruited a 25 year old that happened to have a license. His whole directive was to close it down. But when I saw the needs of the children and when he came, he began to see it too. And we knew that there was something surely we can do to help save these children and continue the work. So with some help from our personal family, my mom and dad and uh, friends that we had, we started just rolling up our sleeves and doing whatever it took to make the Children's Center go. We worked like it all depended on us. We really did whatever needed to be done. The faith and ingenuity is what Carol and Albert brought back. And the desire to keep Maddie's legacy. And I think they did everything with that in view. We worked during the week, and on the weekends, Albert and I would go to different churches. That's where we began to get our support, through the churches and organizations. We knew that if we were going to be able to be vital to taking care of kids for the future, that we had to have a new building. Here we are, a little organization with 70 kids and about 70 employees with a very low budget. Uh, that we're asking the Reynolds Foundation is give us $9.7 million. And when they reviewed the Children's Center, we got the grant. Preparations are underway for the complete reconstruction of the Children's Center in Bethany. The Children's Center in Bethany. Construction of the back. Donald Reynolds Out Children's the Center in Bethany. With the new. So it really set the stage, completely put us in a different light than what we've ever been in before. It just shows you again of how God really provided for us. The transition from the Reynolds Foundation giving us the money to raising $22 million for this building, it just shows the progression that the Children's Center has had. The opening of the Bed Tower here was a pretty um, exciting time for us. It really shifted some of our dynamics. Whereas before we had some challenges in bringing families on board or creating the space for them to stay with their patients and get an immersive learning and training experience, we now can offer that. I've taken my child to hospitals all over Oklahoma and Texas, and none of them compare to this place and the type of medical care he receives. He gets education services, therapies, social services. We're not going traveling out to all these different facilities just to meet with this particular doctor. A lot of the treatments we can now do here. It's really exciting to be at the forefront of changing the way that we deliver this care of learning new things, and being able to share that information with others, and to be able to make an impact, not only here at the hospital, but beyond our walls. People tell me all the time, I love being here. I love the teamwork. I love that we have a purpose. And the purpose is bigger than who we are. The medical care that we deliver is unique. It can be very challenging, uh, but at the same time, deeply rewarding. So we are so grateful for everyone who chooses to join our team here. And we're excited to continue to grow that team, to expand our talent, because we know it'll be important to help us grow for the future. Whether you're here to be in housekeeping, whether you're here to work in the cafeteria, whether you're here to work on the medical staff, whatever you're here for, you are a vital 
part of my child's care. I just can't remember any one time, even walking down the hallway and seeing someone that seemed like they were in a bad mood or anything like that. It just seems like the employees love being here and, and want to help your child and, and just have a compassion for the children. The Children's Center gave me hope that I could go and live as normal a life as possible. And I feel like they gave me the best chance and the best start of any place that I could have ever been. It's not like a hospital, it's home. You know, for someone who's been here as long as me, it's almost hard to believe what's happened here. It's been an amazing journey. To see this beautiful campus, to see all these buildings, and the landscape. Albert used to say, we're going to make this the prettiest place in Bethany. And I think it has happened. We've got some remarkable people that really do have the passion. And I, I think that's my hope for the future, for us to stay strong. But I think it's going to be based on the legacy that we have. The future of the Children's Center is every individual, whatever position, is serve these kids as though you're serving God. And I think if we keep that as our primary focus, the sky is the limit of what we can achieve.